Quiet Place Day One. I got to see this after knowing nothing about the film outside of it following new characters with different roles than the other two movies, that there's a cat in it, and that the entire film takes place on day one of the alien attack from the other Quiet Place movies. Well, day one and day two and the next one, so I guess the more accurate title is A Quiet Place Days 1 through 3, but whatever. <laughs> I'm a pretty big fan of both A Quiet Place and its sequel, Part 2, so after hearing about this prequel slash spinoff centering around a different location and a different set of characters, I admittedly was a little hyped. What I wasn't expecting, though, were the very strange choices in here to switch up the genre not from a tight, tense thriller, but to a more slow, melancholy, romantic-esque character study with some action moments that was a little jarring to say the least. <laughs> That's right, this is barely a horror movie at all. Yes, there's tons of death, action, and tense moments, not to mention 9-11 imagery, but the main focus is instead a drama following two characters struggling to survive. Yes, but also bonding over poetry and shared pasts. It's weird. That doesn't mean that the movie is bad, it's just very different from what I came to expect from the franchise, which I don't think is a bad idea all on its own, but I'll get into it. That being said, let's go over the plot. A Quiet Place Day One mostly follows a cancer patient named Samira living in hospice with her emotional support cat named Frodo. When the death angels appear and ransack New York City, she decides to try to get pizza while a quiet man named Eric follows her, attempting to help for unknown reasons, all the while having to remain quiet and avoid making noises as per the death angels. Angel's MO. Right off the bat, I want to say that I appreciate the film deciding to try something so very different from the established formula. The action, when it is there, looks great. The makeup and practical effects, sets, and acting is astounding, as is usually the case with these movies. But, unfortunately, the Death Angels themselves don't look too real as they're mostly all blurry CG. The introduction of the cat Frodo is a very welcome addition, even if he is somehow the world's quietest cat. I do not understand how this cat doesn't meow or hiss or anything at any point. He's just there. It's so weird how quiet he is, even when being shoved into bags or thrown into water. It is cool though how before this started, Lupita Nyong'o had a fear of cats cats. And then, I guess through exposure therapy and working with Frodo, she overcame that and actually adopted some of her own, so that's cool. I like that a lot. I will say though, one other disappointment is that the film doesn't do what I feel a prequel should. Through two movies, we followed these aliens, so we know how they work, how to kill them, what they like, don't like, etc. But what we don't know is quite a lot. How do they propagate? Where do they come from besides just Space. Why exactly are they so aggressive towards sound? It feels at one point in the film with a certain scene that this would be slightly explored even a little bit, but it really isn't. And how the character gets out of that scene is also really confusing. It just kind of cuts to them out of it. Weird. Not to mention it could have been missed entirely if characters had just let the cat do its own thing. Frodo seems perfectly fine doing his cat stuff, so just let him do the cat cat stuff. We do get some proper prequel content, of course, like a prominent character from part two gets a cameo in this, showing their origins at least, and despite the strange nature of the genre being so different from usual, I'm honestly really glad that this took a different route. I don't need to see the original Quiet Place remade just with different characters in a different setting. This isn't Bird Box Barcelona. Just more stories set in the world, and that's exactly what this movie does. I do appreciate the character study, I love a good character study, but I do still have quite a few issues with this. First off is Eric, played by Joseph Quinn. I think he's a great actor that did fantastic with this and this character. I do like him better as Eddie Munson from Stranger Things, but okay. Eric's motivations and reasoning for following Sam doesn't really make a lot of sense, or maybe I just didn't get it. He just kind of shovels about, even when she tells him to go, he just shuffles on after her and is 
sad, okay? I guess more so later on after the characters bond, it makes a little more sense. But before that, it just feels really weird. He literally pops into the movie about a third of the way into it too, which is very bizarre. Unique, I guess, but it is really weird, especially since we don't see him at all before that and he just kind of pops up out of the ground and is now a character. Okay, whatever, I guess. <laughs> Savira is played by the exceptional Lupita Nyong'o, who deserves her Oscar already. She got snubbed for us. She deserves it. Give it to her. I don't know if this movie really counts as Oscar worthy, but still. Sam is an interesting character that Nyong'o tackles perfectly. She's a complicated character that is used to explore how someone who is already dying might handle an apocalyptic scenario when it's literally just her and her cat. She's smart, witty and strong all in her own ways, but her emotional journey is still relatable and easy to follow along. I think she's written perfectly, even if you supposedly know where her fate is probably ultimately going to go from the beginning. She is a cancer patient in hospice after all. <laughs> I do like that a lot though. It's unique and a bold departure from the norm we're used to. However, this movie does have quite a few issues that hold it back. One being that it just is not scary in the least. There's tense moments, sure, but besides evoking 9-11 imagery, especially in the beginning and a later group scene, there is nothing inherently frightening about this. So much so, the movie ends up relying on a few obvious jump scares that don't amount to much, including one bad, incredibly short dream jump scare that I didn't even react to. It just felt thrown into the movie for some reason. Other than that, I did find it a little annoying that the director, Michael Sarnowski, seems to have a a fascination with artsy moments of quiet whimsy. You'll know what I mean when you see it. The music gets hopeful and the camera motion gets flowy while characters do odd motions like a faux magic show or a puppet show that Sam goes to very early on that makes her cry. It feels so forced to elicit emotional responses from the audience that the situation itself was already doing. I don't need to see the characters miming out a magic show to feel for Sam's situation. I can just empathize. Is that difficult? It feels so forced and out of place that it really took me out of the movie and this happens like three or four times. I get what Sarnowski was trying to do but I really really didn't like it. <laughs> I think there are plenty of other ways to do that sort of thing better, but at least they don't overstay their welcome too much. Oh right, I should probably mention this is the first Quiet Place film not written or directed by John Krasinski, who is busy doing the Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends ripoff film, If. I've seen some clips from that and it also seems to lean way too heavily on whimsy scenes. Just ugh, I, I don't like that. It's ugh, I don't need whimsy in order to feel emotion. It's just padding. Sarnofsky is technically a new director, actually, having just done the 2021 indie film Pig with Nicolas Cage. I haven't seen it, but it has good reviews, so maybe I'll check it out. I just heard it's a slow burn. Not that I mind those. Anyway, I understand what Sarnofsky's vision was going for with the change in tone and focus with this movie, but I feel like it ultimately falls short due to a focus on way too much whimsy that doesn't fit the world. This is a very, very bleak, quiet world. You do not need whimsy. It's bizarre. <laughs> and the lack of explaining literally anything new about these monsters. I will take anything. Just let me learn more about them. Ugh. Also, there just seems to be a very strange lack of consistency in some areas that is never addressed, like how the characters can whisper in a church for some reason, but never anywhere else unless it's raining, okay? And that, wow, everyone in New York City has the quietest footsteps ever. Quiet Place had everyone walking barefoot on sand, but not here. Gravel, pavement, and sewer grates are all magically quiet. But whatever, the characters have to move somehow, I guess. <laughs> maybe if they had the characters taking off their shoes and walking barefoot, maybe? I don't know. I think this is a fine movie, pretty much for how risky it was. The new genre, the strong acting, and less focus on horror is interesting to see, although I would have appreciated more of a focus on the actual horror. It's a horror movie first, not a romance, but whatever. The new tone, though, is 
refreshing to see at least, and will likely keep the franchise fresh for newer entries. I just think it needed a little more action, better explain character actions, and to explain more about the fucking Death Angels. I'm begging you, they're so cool, and we haven't learned anything new about them since 2. Uh -huh, uh. It's definitely worth a watch regardless of how you feel about that, but otherwise it's really just okay and there's no information in here that really justifies watching this to continue watching new entries into the franchise, especially if they do a continuation of part 2, put in like a part 3 I guess. You do not need to see this movie to know that. Literally no new information whatsoever. So take that with a grain of salt. I think it's still entertaining. I can definitely see some people getting kind of annoyed at the genre shift. As long as you know what this genre is when you're going in, I think you'll be fine. Ultimately, A Quiet Place Day 1 gets a 7 out of 10 from me. Hey, hey guys, thanks for sticking around for another one. Oh man, like the more I think about it, the more I really didn't like some of the choices in this movie, but I can still appreciate the strong acting from Nyong'o. I think she's great. I think she needs all of the awards, maybe not for this movie, but in general, she's a fantastic actress. But I don't know if this really justifies itself for a singular Quiet Place entry into the franchise. It is a spinoff. It's not really labeled a spinoff, but it is in fact a spinoff. So I don't know. I feel like this might have done better on streaming. It really doesn't feel like a big theater movie. I still think it's worth paying to go see, but I, I definitely would not have been upset if this dropped on like HBO Max or Netflix or something. Plus, John Krasinski just pisses me off lately, but that's John Krasinski. He has nothing to do with this movie besides owning the rights to the franchise, which is also somewhat plagiarized from another movie. <laughs> but that movie's not good, so whatever, it doesn't matter. But I don't know. What did you guys think? Have you seen this movie? Do you have any ideas? Did you like the genre shift? Do you think it was a little too whimsical? Uh, let me know in the comments below. After that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a video. And yeah, that's it. Have a great day, and if you're not, have a better one. See ya. I'm just a ghost in your stereo. The feeling that we are the shipwreck in the undertow. You're just a ghost, so alone. I'm not the one